Hello. Checking in just to say you've made it through really the heaviest part of this whole course. Everything from here forward is truly the fun stuff. Signal flow was a lot. It's the one concept that I really struggled with the most, but it really is the most important foundational concept. Hopefully now when you look at the mix window and you see all these intense buttons and sliders, you're no longer intimidated because you know that it's really just the same stuff on every track. You can rewatch those videos anytime you need a review, but let's keep going because even if some pieces aren't quite clicking yet, I promise they will. We get to talk about plugins next. This is like our toy box. These are mini programs that you can plug into the big program to make the game more fun. When I explain this, I like to compare Pro Tools to Instagram. Instagram is like the big program. The plugins are like the filters. When you put a filter on, it changes the way your picture looks. When you put a plugin on, it changes the way your audio sounds. There are endless, endless amounts of plugins you can use or you can buy, but there are actually only about nine categories of plugin types. Check out the PDF that breaks down plugin types, and there are five locations on your template where these plugins belong. And we're going to go over them in depth, but those are your vocal chain, your effects chain, your master chain, the audio track itself, and audio suite, which is a way to permanently apply an effect to the audio. So let's break down all these plugins, and then I'll give you a tour of my personal template. Okay, we're back. And spoiler alert, your homework this week is going to be to save your first template. Let's talk about the what, where, and why. There are five locations where you would put the plugins and reasons for why you would do that. So first of all, you can put plugins right on the audio track. I would put auto-tune on your audio track if that is something you wish to use. Waves Tune Live is another one. So, so tuning plugins. The, that's the one thing that you will be putting on your vocal audio track itself. The only other thing you might want to put on is like a really unique special effect that will remain on that track pretty much for the whole song. You can automate it to turn on and off. This is an effect that you'd want to have on the entire song. And so sometimes in sync songwriting, um, we love what's called saturation. <laughs> uh, basically like distortion and my go-to plugin for that is called <laughs> decapitator <sighs> so sometimes I will put this plugin directly onto this and I'll give it some drive some some cool grit to it um, sometimes I do put an EQ on it but only for special effects reasons such as um, such as to cut all the high end out and or the other way, uh, cut all the low end out. Um, so we're just hearing that telephone effect, uh, things like that. So just special effects that only belong to that one vocal, but I don't add time-based effects really. Um, so like your reverb and delay, uh, I would leave on your auxiliaries. This will just become clear to you eventually which effects make sense to put here because it doesn't make sense to put auto-tune on a send and then just send some of your vocal to the auto-tune like that doesn't really that doesn't really make sense so and then the next location is your auxiliary tracks this is your vocal chain tracks so our lead aux our background vocal aux um, i cleared the plugins because i want to just show you um, a quick build out of an actual like good vocal chain that you might want to use. First thing I always put on is my de-esser. So a de s -s 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 So basically a de is going to calm down and automatically turn down your volume when it senses an S at this specific frequency. You want to probably s easily you can just throw on one of these presets. Um, and it'll be pretty set up close to what it's probably going to be, but then you're going to want to play back yourself and see what happens, listen. Maybe you might find like, oh, my, my S's are actually kind of a closer to eight, eight um, kilohertz. Eight uh, frequency is basically the note, uh, but in hertz instead of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Frequency and hertz, kilohertz, uh, 8.3 K stands for 1,000, so 8,300 hertz. So you'll just make little adjustments there. So de first. As you're getting started, I'm just gonna tell you straight up, rely on these presets and make adjustments. Use your ears. You're gonna have to train your ears. It's 
gonna take some time. The next thing I do is my EQ. Um, you probably will have EQ seven, EQ three seven band comes with Pro Tools. So let's go with that one. I really do use this a lot. I use it mostly for special cases, such as like I showed you with, um, I just wanna cut out all the low on this or and make a cool effect. I use it sometimes um, in addition to the Pro Q3, which is the one I use. Uh, that's this one. Like if I'm not quite nailing uh, a resonant frequency, uh, I will open up this and do what's called um, search and destroy mode. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a quick tour of EQ without going too in depth. So this is an equalizer. So the bottom is uh, the frequency and this is volume. So on this graph, those are gonna be your lower notes. It's gonna be your higher notes. Me personally, I have a very resonant frequency around 3000 Hertz. That's very annoying. So I'm also, I'm often dipping it there. We often want our vocal to sparkle just a little. So just a little bit, not too much. You don't want it to sound too thin um, of the high frequency, the higher frequencies. Notice that these are different colors, right? Uh, they, they correspond to these controls down here as well. Uh, you can pull it up and down. You see the gain, uh, the gain going up and down. Um, and then you pull it this way and you see the frequency moving. Well, this other, this other thing here is called the Q. Q is basically how wide or narrow this, this band is. So how targeted uh, that, that uh, turn up or turn down of those frequencies are. So search and destroy, I turn this Q all the way, super narrow, as narrow as I can. And I'll press play and I will listen and s slowly go like this and it'll be boosting um, these frequencies as you are passing by. But when you pass by, in my case, three, like twos, 2.6 to 3.4, suddenly it gets crazy loud. And that means I found a resonant frequency, meaning it's just, either it's just like a really uh, loud frequency that's unpleasant in my voice itself, or uh, it could even be that the computer screen is resonating. When my voice vibrates the screen at a certain note, it, uh, it amplifies it. And so I would identify that frequency and then just pop that gain down. Um, maybe not all the way, cause it might then start to make other things sound th thin. So use your ears. Uh, and if it feels like it's improving the sound, I probably leave it around there, um, then that's great. Uh, sometimes our mid range is a little intense. Um, it, it, we all have different voices, so it really, it really uh, depends on you. Um, these these uh, parameters right here are HPF, LPF stands for low pass filter and high pass filter, and. Um, and also I wanna highlight the these buttons right here are the shape. These ones that are in the middle, they're always gonna be basically this shape. It's a bell shape. And uh, when it's at the end, you have the option to make it a uh, shape like this. So um, these are default off. Uh, so you'd have to put the in button, <laughs> press the in button. That means uh, we're gonna turn these on. And it creates this gray ball now. And then you can literally cut, this is cutting all of this out. So we're literally deleting all these frequencies from being heard. And um, I like to also change the Q. Um, when, the, when you're on this shape, what the Q does will go like that. <laughs> so it'll just make it a harsher uh, drop. With vocals, we tend to not need the super low frequencies, and so it's great to just cut them on, cut them on out. Um, I would say that uh, if you start to hear your, the sound of your voice really changing, you've gone too far. You almost want to like find when it starts to change and then pull back just a little bit. So it's literally leaving all the frequencies that your voice actually makes, um, and this will delete um, maybe some room hum and 
just, un yeah, just really unnecessary sounds. We like our high frequencies in a voice, so I'm just gonna take that out. Um, that's a quick uh, tour of how an EQ works, and they pretty much all do the same thing. Uh, there's just different brands, and you know, maybe some additional parameters. This is, but this is a really uh, effective plugin, even being a stock plugin. Um, next, you're gonna want a compressor. So, hmm. I would say let's do the Dyne threes. I believe come with Pro Tools, so um, let's try this one again. I would say let's put a, a vocal comp setting um, and then just call it a day for now. Uh, this would get into uh, mixing. I'm gonna bring in an expert to have a nice discussion on compression. Um, so without going too much into that, uh, I often do add <laughs> an additional limiter. I like this ML, ML 4000 by McDSP. Waves does have another great limiter, but I'm gonna just use this. And because I love this one because it's just so simple, so simple. Uh, ceiling and threshold. Um, basically, uh, ceiling will say, I always kind of just put it like negative one or negative like 0.5. That's just basically saying like, hey, if I get close to this, like make sure that we don't go louder than this. Threshold, uh, if I turn down the threshold to negative, let's say like even six. Um, use your ears, watch your meters, because that now that's this is gonna make your signal louder, right? So um, make sure you don't go too loud. You should be great, and this is really um, pretty important to make sure that your vocals are loud enough in the mix. So we've got our DSer, our EQ, compressor, a limiter, then maybe sometimes, uh, depending on how awful your S's are, you might add another DSer, and then you might even add another type of compressor. Um, like a multi-band compressor or um, I actually really like a uh, vocal rider live this one's fun because you get to see uh, as as your vocal is playing it's like it slides up and down you can see it actually like trying to fix it for you this is by waves um, I really love this one uh, ah notice I hit uh, the preset menu and there was nothing there um, so this happens a lot. Uh, sometimes the plugin itself has a different location for presets. So uh, check it out. Default preset is right here. Um, there is its presets. So I like High Rider. <laughs> so there's a good build out of a vocal chain for you. And honestly, you could totally easily do is hit option, drag, option, click and drag. Um, remember that's how we like copy and paste this over. Uh, same goes with plugins. So. Um, I'm going to option, click and drag my entire vocal chain from the lead vocal chain to the background vocal chain. <laughs> cool. Next, um, let's, let's look at these real quick. Reverbs. I love cathedral reverb. Um, cathedral reverb. I don't want to ever use anything else. I love it. I love it. I love it. The only thing you might want to change is the reverb time. I have it, well, this one is set to 9.7 seconds. So that means whatever audio is playing will reverberate, that reverb will finally diminish and decay 9.7 seconds later. So to some people that's excessive. <laughs> Maybe dial back to five, four, um, up to you. Uh, play with all the different settings. There's also some other really crazy settings. Um, this this one called Gas Tank is crazy. It's so weird and I barely use it, but I, once in a while I find that I want to make like a really weird effect and um, I love that. I love that one. So delays. Uh, I like to actually have three delay tracks. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to select it. Shift, Option, D to duplicate. I'm gonna duplicate it twice. Ooh, and it even kept the inserts on. Um, okay, so this is a multi-delay. So there's actually like multiple delays happening within this plugin. Check that out, see if that's enough for you. I like to have them really independent. Uh, I'm actually gonna go to dynamic delay. This should be a much simpler, <laughs> much simpler setup. 
and you're gonna look for something that says, you know, what, how many quarter notes, or is it a quarter note or an eighth note, uh, things like that. So um, I'm gonna start with eighth note delays, and then I'm just gonna option, drag this over here, and I'm gonna change this one to a quarter note delay. I don't see it, so there's gonna be a way. Ah, yes. So <laughs> this is very unclear, but it has the eight, right? I'm assuming that stands for eighth note. So um, my first one, I'm gonna have eight. My second one, I'm gonna turn up my mix. I'm gonna make this a quarter note. Oh yeah, look, C, 16th note. Okay, four T means triplet. I don't want it tripleted, quarter. So four would equal quarter. Let's do one more and let's make it a half note delay. Two for half note, I guess. <laughs> it's a weird labeling system, but um, as long as we figured it out, we figured it out. This is gonna just give your mix um, and pop music a lot of cool depth. Sometimes um, I add additional effects to the delay so that the delay itself has an effect. One thing I definitely do is uh, actually cut out the lows um, on these effects. So uh, maybe even all the way down, all the way up to like 500, 400. Um, so, so it's only gonna be delaying, uh, echoing the high frequencies. Same with the reverb. I just put it out all across the board. And one thing to know is it's good to put things in a specific order because things happen in order. If this reverb um, is a cathedral, it might actually add like lower frequencies or higher frequencies. So if my um, EQ is before it, right? What it's doing is it's actually cutting the low end from my original signal and sending it to this verb. But um, now the verb is in charge because it's second and now it's the new authority. It will uh, add whatever frequencies it wants, you know, um, depending on the plugin. If I actually put the EQ after this reverb, that guarantees that any uh, added frequencies from the reverb are gonna be cut because now this is the new authority, like this is what happens next. Uh, so I put the EQ after um, those effects. Uh, one more fun thing I sometimes add, you find some fun stuff under the modulation and harmonic uh, <laughs> menus. So uh, maybe also effects menus. Um, yeah, sorry, I have a ton of plugins. Your your screen's gonna look a lot <laughs> less busy than that, but see what you got. Um, fun one is uh, a chorus or uh, flanger. Uh, so let's add a flanger. <laughs> um, maybe let's do a slow one. So uh, what a flanger does is, is it's gonna like, gonna add this like bouncing left to right kind of vibe. So it's just gonna give a little bit more texture to the delay itself. Also, let's see what else. Um, well, oh, we can do like air flanger because you probably have that. Um, add fatness, why not? Another one that might be fun to add is um, under sound field, uh, stereo width. Stereo width uh, literally just makes the sound wider. Uh, so. Again, play play along with play with these. Um, you just do wider highs. Uh, don't even know what it's gonna sound like. So these are just I'm just showing you. I probably wouldn't do all of these. Um, let's just go with that. Uh, the next location is your master. Mastering is um, the art of polishing and overall making your track nice and loud. Um, you're gonna wanna do maybe just a little bit of EQ. Um, and I, when I say a little, I mean a little, like don't EQ much at all or don't EQ at all. <laughs> That's also a good option. Um, so th this EQ doesn't even have any mastering presets. If you have other EQs, I would look out for maybe um, a folder that says mastering. Use your ears if you're like, mm, I really just think that overall we could use a little more bass. Overall, we could probably use a little more sparkle. And overall, um, this mid area is really lacking. Maybe I'll boost that a little bit. Or maybe this mid area is still, um, maybe this mid area is still really 
harsh or um, honky. I've heard, I've heard uh, this area, 3K, 4K, described as honking, kind of nasal area, nasally sounding area. So I might just dip it just a tiny bit. But look, I'm really barely touching this. Like maybe that, like, but really, really, you're not gonna wanna put much um, because it's going to affect the entire mix, okay? So with your compressors that you choose for your master, um, highly recommend you go for something that is a multi-band compressor. I don't see any uh, that I that I in fact know are multi-band that come with Pro Tools, but here's an example of what one looks like. Looks like an EQ. Um, it's compression, but only on specific frequency ranges. So I'm only gonna be compressing the low end, the low mid, the high mid, and the highs, and they're, they're gonna be compressed separately. ML 4000 is a favorite, and they have a nice mastering suite uh, of presets. Um, I always go for like smooth. I'm not gonna get into uh, mixing and mastering too much. I'm just showing you <laughs> uh, a really, really um, broken down uh, description. So a uh, little EQ, a little multi-band compression, limiter might be great to just overall raise that raise that threshold. And the next place where you're gonna uh, find plugins is the Audio Suite. Love Audio Suite. Um, my favorite plugin in the world, Vocaline Ultra, um, is literally you do have to process something so it doesn't even come as an option to be plugged right in to an input here. Um, so what, what you're doing with Vocaline Ultra is um, I'm gonna give you a fake example. Um, say these were the same thing, uh, or this was the lead vocal and this was the background vocal, um, and they're the same line basically, and you want them to be timed perfectly with each other. Um, what you would do is you would select with your grabber uh, and capture that lead. That's your guide, that's your guide vocal. Then you would grab the background vocal or the dub and you will capture that. And it just analyzed the audio um, to see what it would need to do to change it. Um, you have match timing and you ma match pitch. If this was a harmony, I would definitely turn that pitch matching off or <laughs> it would literally change all of the, the pitch of the harmony to the same pitch as the lead. Um, since, it's diff since it's a different recording, um, it's still gonna sound different, still gonna give it a nice thickness. Um, however, if you have this all the way to zero, all the way to zero, that's too tight. It's not gonna sound good. It's gonna cause what's called phasing. And yeah, it's basically almost gonna make these audios, these audio waves um, identical. So they will basically uh, compete for space in a funny way and cause this like really weird sound. Um, so I like, to keep um, the max difference around, you know, like 11 to 21 um, for time. Um, and pitch matching, when I do use it, um, maybe around one or two, um, and that should be good. And so now I've set my parameters, I've captured both. Audio Suite doesn't do anything until you hit render and it just processed it and you know that you'll remember that you did it because um, it adds a signature to the end of your file name right there. So Vocaline Ultra added its signature there. Um, other things you can do, you can, if you wanted to process and like permanently make this uh, a different EQ setting, like you could, this could be one of these cases where you're like, let's just make this one part have this crazy effect um, and render that. And now it's cut all of this out. And um, the only way I can undo that, so if I hit Command Z right now, but if I go and do some other stuff, uh, I have permanently processed that forever. <laughs> um, maybe a way to retrieve it would be to uh, open up the clips menu um, and select this and maybe you'd be able to find the previous version of it but yeah, uh, this is where you could potentially look for it, but 
in, in my eyes, it's long gone. And it, the, digging through these, this is gonna populate like with tons of files. Like every individual um, wave file creates a new file here. So that uh, should not be an option. You should just be prepared. <laughs> and um, think ahead if you're like, I'm not sure if I'll end up using that effect. Option, click and drag, mute it, throw it in a playlist for later so you didn't completely get rid of it. Okay, um, that's it really uh, for plugins. You can do a lot of things. It's This is where your creativity comes into play. I love this game. Uh, if I recorded really quietly <laughs> and I have many different tracks instead of instead of uh individually changing this to maybe give it a little bit of boost i could select multiple ones process uh, a gain increase um, for multiple tracks it is a little bit faster if you need to do it to a lot of tracks um, otherwise i love the gain fader